I'm of the generation that I was like um, uh, this a little kid when the Kung Fu explosion hit in uh, the 70s, where they were showing all these uh, Kung Fu films all the time for about like, you know, two years. And then uh, the craze kind of died down, but it was kept alive in the late 70s and through a lot of the 80s in the grindhouses and the ghetto theaters and stuff. And I'd go in down there to see them. And so it's just like, it's, it's been like, uh, to me, I think it's one of the greatest genres of cinema that ever existed, all right? <laughs> But, you know, for uh, people who didn't grow up with, uh, you know, Hong Kong cinema, now they saw Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, not only do they like it, not only do they get a, a nice, soft introduction to this genre, all right, it's done something else. It's given them an appetite. They want to see more of it. They think it was, it blew their minds. So they want to see more of it. Now they have more of an appetite. So it's like, well, if you like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, you'll love Iron Monkey. <laughs> American audiences can find Hong Kong films kind of schizophrenic because they are like, you know, comedy this moment, this crazy action sequence in this moment, big tragedy in this moment, all right, big love story here, then comedy, and then action, you know, and, you know violence, you know, boom, 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 boom. But in Hong Kong, audiences, and again, you're also dealing with poor people going to the movies. I mean, you are dealing really with a lot of peasants going to movies and paying money. And you know what? They want to have the whole emotional experience, all right, when they go to a movie. They want everything for the price of a ticket. And our sophistication is now starting to work against us, all right? We've sophisticated ourselves out of tears. We've sophisticated ourselves out of enjoyment, out of, out of you know, believing in magic almost. And um, it's a damn shame. I mean, everything's got to be so hip and so cool and so detached. But... In a kung fu film, the themes are very resonant, you know. Um, um, they're very much about important qualities, loyalty, um, honor, you know, staples like this. You can watch a normal movie, uh, and, you know, like a normal, like I say, a modern day action film, all right, and you can, and they, they have like, you know, they'll have a shootout for no reason, or they'll have a, a um, you know, you know, they'll cram in another car chase, and we'll, we'll do things like that. And believe me, Hong Kong cinema does that as much, if not more, than American cinema, right? But in a kung fu film, the kung fu is the reason it's there. Just the same way that, you know, sword fights and swashbucklers, no, they do propel the story along, because that is why you're there, all right? I'm, you know, uh, I'm, when I go to see an Errol Flynn movie or a Cornell Wilde, you know, uh, swashbuckler and everything, I want to, you know, I'm going there to see a series of, you know, of, uh, of sword fights, you know, each one a little bigger and grander than the last one, leading up to the final fight between the hero and the villain, all right? That should blow you away. And that is, uh, and that is definitely the level of work going on in Iron Monkey. Oh. <laughs> I think the first movie that I saw of Yuwa Peng's was uh, the film that he did with Jackie Chan that made him like the biggest star in, in Asia was uh, Snake Fist and Eagle Shadow. And then he followed up with Drunken Master, all right? And uh, starring both, uh, starring Jackie Chan and um, uh, Wu Peng's father, Simon Yu, all right, who became just as big a star as Jackie after those movies became, you know, that was his, became that, became the role, the, the old master. And then it was like around, um, I guess like it was around like 93, 94, I started really realizing that the guy who directed these movies and the guy who was the martial arts choreographer on this movie, I could start noticing his kung fu style. I noticed his uh, 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 choreography. I could tell it from Sammo Hong's. I could tell it from this guy's or that guy's. And then I was like, oh, this guy is the, the most imaginative kung fu choreogra choreographer of all times. And I could do... Uh, like a book, like what Andrew Saris did in American cinema. I could do a book on kung fu film directors, all right? I mean, you know, from the old school to now, all right? I know their names, I know their work, and everything like that. And Yu Ping is my favorite. I think he's the best. He has this expertness and craftsmanship, and then just this wild imagination that he keeps putting in it. That's why there's this aspect of, um, you know, as opposed to, say, a Jackie Chan film, which I, I'm a big, huge fan of Jackie Chan films. And one of the things that started happening in his movies is each movie had to top the other movie. All right, so the end sequences or something got bigger and more elaborate, and he was taking more risks and, like, bigger stunts and bigger stunts and bigger stunts. Well, you want pink on it? has the same thing but in a completely different way. His things is it's more about the fighting and the choreography rather than the big stunts, all right? And um, 
the execution of the moves rather than like the way the guy falls. And then Donnie Yen is just terrific. He's, he's, I've, I've seen a zillion of his movies. And it's really neat because he's a, a protege of Yu Ping's. And, um, and he's uh, uh, done a bunch of films with him, uh, uh, Drunken Tai Chi. Uh, and he also did Hero of Heroes, which is really neat because in Hero of Heroes, he plays the younger version of the character, um, uh, Sam Seed, that um, um, Yu Ping's father, Simon Yoon, made famous. The old, drunken, uh, 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 you know, bum-looking, irascible master. Iron Monkey in the in the film uh, is a legendary hero. Like in this, in, I mean, he is Zorro. He is Robin Hood. He's actually a company. He's the Chinese Zorro. He even looks like Zorro, except you know, uh, uh, it's like you see his eyes. It's like his exact his exact costume is almost the exact reverse. Um, you know, and Zorro was about you know, the, the, uh, all the padrones squeezing the peasants, all right, and then Zorro coming back and fighting for them who can't fight for themselves and returning the land to them, returning their, their money to them. Same thing with Robin Hood, you know, fighting the evil sheriff of Nottingham, all right, was, you know, uh, taking, using his advantages to uh, uh, oppress the people. Our monkey rises up in just the same way. There's a very interesting aspect about the movie is uh, American audiences will watch the movie. And to them, um, the leads of the movie will be Iron Monkey, all right, and uh, the character that Donnie Yen plays. If you boil the movie down, the hero of the movie is Wong Fei Ho, the little, the little boy. He's the true hero of the film. And, you know, he's a real fellow. He's like, you know, considered like the most legendary hero of China as, as far as their folklore is concerned and their history. Even though he like, he, he died in the 20s, you know, he came into our century. He's like this legendary character. And so it was like a real, like, revisionist aspect of the movie of like, let's see the early adventures of Wang Fei Ho. Let's see his father, see who, who, who his first teacher was. Let's see his adventures as a young man. All right. Uh, so uh, now, American audiences won't get most of that. And they don't have to. They, they truly don't have to. Um, but it is funny, because it is a different viewing experience if, if you've grown up with who Wong Fei Ho is and just watch it. It would be, actually, the equivalent would be like starting, seeing uh, this really great Western and realizing that the little, and then finding at the end that the little boy in the Western is White Earp. <laughs> All right, that would be the equivalent of uh, what Wong Fei Ho is in this film. <laughs> I think Jean Wang right, plays Miss Orchid in the film, and she's really cool. She, she took over uh, uh, the Auntie May character in uh, Once Upon a Time in China 4, who's the female lead, and carried it on uh, through uh, 4, 5, and 6. And uh, she actually has my favorite, actually, fight in, uh, um, in Iron Monkey, the scene where she fights the monks, all right, and then she gets the sleeping powder uh, thrown on her. And what? Yeah. <laughs> And then the uh, little boy, Young Wang Fei, uh, Young Wang Fei Ho, jumps in and like uh, joins the fight. That's actually my favorite fight scene in the film. Actually, I think it's really cool. You fool, you done. I do this festival in Austin, uh, where I show films from my print, film print, print collection. And when I show them, I'll say I'll show 30 movies. All right, it gets all written about on the internet, and all of a sudden, you know, like maybe six of those movies, you know, no one's ever heard of before, and they get really good response. Maybe this old black exploitation movie over here, and this kung fu film over here, and this Italian horror film over there, and all of a sudden, bang! Now half a million people are like reading the internet, and now they're like looking for those movies and want to see them, and all of a sudden now they they start getting a little, you know, and I'm not talking about the whole world. I'm not talking about even like, you know, the regular mainstream, you know, suburban America. But for the big film fans, all of a sudden now, these movies are officially on the map. So now to see it kind of come back after, um, you know, these last few years, after like loving it forever, all right? It's just, oh, it's just so cool.